Not deadline, but we're moving speedily towards it. What if you get to be arrested? I don't care. Okay. That's interesting. In the past, you have asked your friends not to attend churches manned by Yoruba pastors. Yes. Why has you, you seem to have toned down a bit on that? Yeah. Because they have changed as well. Oh, interesting. <laughs> So people are saying that federalism is not working for Nigeria. How do you intend that the new graphia will be governed? Confederation. Every ethnicity will have the rights to control their resources and to govern themselves. There will be no interference from anybody whatsoever. How do you react to the U.S. ambassador's prediction that Biafra is a failed project, or the Biafra project will fail? They said the same thing about the state of Israel in 1948, and coming to existence. So, it will come. There's nothing man can do to stop it. So, in this new draft, right, if it gets actualized eventually, would you contest for political positions? No. Why not? My job is to restore the effort, not to serve it in any political past. So, now how do you react to Ohani's Indigo's disownment of you as well as that of Abga? I'm not sure they disown me. We disagree, but the media will not hide it up because. They want to magnify the differences that we have. It's just mere emphasis, divergent views and emphasis. Basically, that's what I used to. We're, we are Republicans by nature, so people are entitled to their views. I may not welcome it, but I have any right to vote. How has IPO and yourself reacted to the Arawa ultimatum to Igbos in the northern part of the country? It wasn't directed at us. So, I couldn't possibly react to it because it's not related to it. But I, I think it goes to show that they're in tune with prevailing trend, which is referendum. At least we welcome the fact that some of them are Democrats. I don't understand how it wasn't directed. You, you are the leader of Biafra. Are Igbos, Igbos in the north not part of? They are part of Biafra. They've been, your your landlord said you should go. Then what do you expect to do? Exactly. Your landlord said you should go. Isn't trying to go? If you said they will kill you. They've been doing this since 1945. They kill all the time, so it's nothing new to us. It was the, it was reported that you had said uh, no elections in Anambra State. Do you think that can be possible without a, without bloodshed of some sort? How can you be bloodshed when you're in your house sitting down and enjoying your friend Salah on the 18th of November, 2017? How's that bloodshed? It's when you said uh, no elections, mm -hmm. no referendum. Mm -hmm. How do you intend to make this happen? Are you are you going to declare that Biafran sit at home on election day? Yes. Yes. There will be no movement. No cats, no dogs outside, no chicken, nothing. Okay, so Complete silence. Those in the zoo say that you're a hypocrite and mm -hmm. that um, you have a British passport mm -hmm. and yet you have asked Biafran to destroy theirs on a certain day. What are your reactions to this? I never give such a directive. You're asking me a last question, and, and I speak truthfully and directly. I did not give such an order. If people want to destroy whatever document of yours they have on them, that's entirely up to them. Okay. And I'm not a hypocrite either, because I was, my land was forcibly taken over by external forces, and I'm being forced to live under it. It's my job to fight to get myself out of it. Now that's it, we're all over. I'm not I had British traveling documents before they still fought for independence and got it. Something applied to Jack Washington in America. He was a British colony settler, traveled about as a British citizen before he got USA out of the mess that was coming in from England. Something in India is nothing new. So from my interview now with you, it appears that the, the media sort of has a lot of bias information going on, you know, about IPOP? Because those that fund them have an interest in maintaining one Nigeria. Those that loot, steal, cheat, criminalize the entire political landscape, they have something to gain. So the more Nigeria continues, the more these criminals and rogues get fatter. But then how do you intend to stifle the false information that goes by all? Is by trying to respond when people like you come around and ask me questions and then I respond to them. If those who are sensible and reasonable understand what I can do and what I cannot do. I've been uh, in the public limelight for close to 
for you. So people know what I can do, what I cannot do. If people wish to delude themselves with false propaganda information about me, they're more than entitled to it. I cannot stop them from doing so. But what I say to them is that those people who are feeding you this junk information about me, they do not wish you well. People like us, IPOB, are the only ones that can save you from your chronic poverty, from your diseased state of mind, from your horrible bad roads, from your non-existent hospitals, from your absence of infrastructure. And we're the only ones who can make it possible for you to get a job. That's how it is. All those people telling you all those nonsense about Namdekan is because they know that Namdekan is capable of articulating a policy or a viewpoint that can get you out of the mess that you're in. So they want you to remain poor, to remain blind, for your parents to be dying. It benefits them. So, uh, lately you've been granted bail conditions. Yes. And uh, the Nigerian government and a lot of public opinion analysts mm -hmm. seem to think that you're breaching the bail conditions. Do Where were those true? people when Buhari refused to obey court order upon court order upon court order? Why didn't anybody go to Daura or go to Asarok to ask Buhari why he'd failed to obey court orders to set me free to release Dasuki and to release Zagasak Zagasak? Why have they not obeyed the court order to release Bright Chimeze Ishiwa as pronounced by a competent court of law in New York? Why don't you concern yourself with the gross abuse of human rights being perpetrated on a daily basis by DSS, by the police and by the army? Why are you not trying as hard as possible to uncover the mass grave that they have in Army Barracks in Onitsha? Why have you not questioned them about the amnesty report and about the slaughter and the butchering of our people? Why are you people so hell-bent on things that don't matter? Whereas you should be concerning yourself with things that actually matter. Have you asked them why you have no light? Why you must run a generator? Have you asked them why they import refined fuel when you have four modern refineries and you have abundance of crude oil. Have you asked them any of those questions? Why not have good roads? You have aggregates, you have stones, you have bitumen coming from the ground. Why do you have bad roads? And you have unemployed graduates of structural or should I say civil engineering. Why are you not asking them all those questions? Because they understand that Nam the kind of mean well for the masses, for the people, the downtrodden, people who are suffering because of poverty. They turn your mind around because they know you are not disciplined enough to understand that you need to stand your ground to demand for what is yours. That is why it is very easy to twist the mind of a black person. Sheikh Guevara came to Congo to fight many, many years ago, over 50 years ago. Why did he leave? Because he said a black African man cannot be disciplined enough to put the need of his self-preservation and survival over the need of the stomach. Speaking of demanding, um, have you ever thought about asking that Southeast leaders be accountable for their non-performance instead of you know, following it this way you are? How can they perform when there is no Southeast leader who is responsible for the maintenance of the Enugu Iwacha, which is Port Harcourt Expressway? How can I hold any governor responsible when all these so-called federal roads are denied any form of attention or maintenance. How can I, because he is not, it, it belongs to what they call the exclusive list. So now tell me, how can I be responsible for that? Are they meant to build second Niger bridge? Is it their business to build a second Niger bridge? Is it their business to compel the Africa Development Bank to provide underwriting loans to people who want to borrow money to build factories and industries? Is it their fault as well? But who builds the roads in the north? From the same oil money coming from Oba, from the same proceeds from gas fields in Ahaji, in Ebema, and you're telling me you're in one Nigeria, one viable, unity driven country. It's a charade, it's fake, it's a lie, and I'm sure you know it. So, um, I was going through Twitter, and uh, there's this tweet you know, trending about yes. a certain Usita Chiduka yes. who drove you home from yes. prison. Mm -hmm. And now he's declared that he's going to campaign for elections in Anambra. Yes. And then now you are pumped again to say no election in Anambra. Yes. Don't you see the irony in all of this? There is no irony because I'm a very consistent person. I do not change. People can change as a business. I don't change. I'm a number. I don't change. You don't think this is some kind of betrayal? That. Let's say that Chidoka drove me from prison. You want me to walk from prison from Kujetu? You know, people felt that. Um, 
he was lending you, helping her, he was supporting you when you, you were in prison. He was not supporting me, he was concerned about my plight as any other sensible human being ought to be. That's what he was trying to do, being reasonable. And that's what he did. I would do the same thing. I got the fact that I got lawyers for suspected Boko Haram inmates at DSS. Does that mean I'm a Boko Haram supporter, sympathizer? The fact that I brought parents of ours are people detained at DSS illegally for nearly four years. Does that mean I support Boko Haram? Does that mean I support Boko Haram? Exactly. So why should Osita Chidoka, giving me a lift from prison, represent anything that's problem? Sir, um, some political leaders in the southwest and some Nigerians on social media have this notion that you are hungry for power and um, political position. That's why you are in the forefront of this struggle. What? Because they know that's what will appeal to you. I said it earlier, your primordial instinct of debasing yourself to your jealousy, basically. People who try to be like me cannot be like me, so there is just a very cheap slander. But I welcome it. It makes me become better. I work twice harder than I should. So the more these battles come, the better for me. They know that it's guided, they know they are lying, they know what they're saying is false, but they say it because they're hoping to tap into the reservoir you have of greed and jealousy. Maybe if you cannot defeat the Nam, they can in a recent debate. Why don't we try greed and jealousy? Look at him, he's only he's him. Why not somebody else? You can't be me because you can never be me. Are there conversations you would rather, you would want to have happen to put an end to the affair from the Nigerian government? I mean, you've gotten the question wrong in my view because there can never be an end to the affair. The affair will come, it doesn't matter what man does, it will come. So, even no if there's, there's the, there is an evil president tomorrow, if you like, let my wife be the first. Woman, U.S. President, you won't stop me, sir. Um, there is this sister organization or movement that's the mass up. Mm. Um, there was a time, um, there was a news that there is a rancor between the APOP, IPOP, and the mass up. Has there been, um, like this? It's very interesting how you get. Um, news uh, that you consider to be newsworthy or the wrong type of news and not the positive one. Myself came here well, along with 15 other groups and made me the overall leader of the Afro. I'm sure you're aware of that. Yes, sir, yeah. Try and report that more often. We're not fighting each other. We know where we're going. We're going to get the Afro. There is nothing anybody can do about it. Absolutely nothing. 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 I need them to understand this. We've crossed the Rubicon, the point of no return. There is nothing anybody can do. If I'm alive, if I'm dead, if I'm wherever I may be, the Afra will come. If I'm dead, it's even better because it will come far more quicker. I'll show you. Thank sir, you, sir. No, sorry, last question, sir. Sir, um, having um, a conversation or a box sample of Biafrans residing in Lagos and Habuja, even though a large percentage of them support the struggle, Yes, but they have the fear of what will happen to their investment and properties over there. What do you have to? The best security they have in preserving their investment is Biafra. If Biafra is fighting for you, don't want to touch your property. If you're fighting alone, you're bound to lose it. So Biafra is the best. We will become the 16th member country of Ecos. If Nigeria doesn't release those properties, then we will take them to court and we'll get them back. Even twice the value. The Jews had investments all over the world. Most of the priceless artifacts and paintings belonged to many families in Germany. It was stolen by the Nazi party. Do you know that? Eventually they got everything back with compensation on top of it. That's what we're going to do. If you thought our investments will come back for you, and we know we can get it from you. So there is nothing for anyone to worry about. It's only if you are not stopping you from being a Nigerian, if you if you are born on the Streets of Lagos, and you want to be a Lagosian, and your, your name is Adama. Oh, well, I'm good. There's no problem. We have our people who are in Botswana. There's no problem. Thank you very much. You're welcome.